Hi Mandra Armstrong, welcome to the back office Teardown Lab. Another package from China. Yes, indeedy. Let's rip into this like a monkey on a cupcake. Mmm, it looks like and mm, smells like a GoTech. It is! Da -da 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 -da. Another GoTech unit and ooh, I have to say it looks even cheaper and nastier than usual. No, it's it's pretty good. I'm gonna be fair. I get confused actually when I see GoTech units because the one on my Atari ST, I've sort of messed with it enough that I don't recognize them anymore because it lives <laughs> lives permanently in my Atari ST hole. And uh, you can look at one of my earlier videos actually if you want to see another GoTech unboxing and teardown, but I'm going to do, a, do, do one right now. Actually, you don't have to go nowhere because I want to see what's inside, see if they've changed. I got this for about a tenner. Yes, a tenner. It's crazy what you can get. And the reason I got it, I'll tell you why, is because I um, have recently acquired an Amstrad PPC and I have to do a video on that at some point soon. Um, and it also used the sort of half size 720k whatever floppies that Atari ST used. So I took the board out of my Atari ST and it did work. Um, it worked pretty good, but there wasn't any software on the, the, the uh, portable PC to actually edit this for DOS. Or, so I don't really know how, how I'm going to use that. I'd use the Atari ST to organize the disk images. But um, I'm going to have a think about this. I might try this as is, though, to see how far it can work, really, without any firmware mods. You know, because if you can run it without that firmware, it'd be interesting. So I'm going to probably do a test with this disk. But first things first, I want to have a little eyeball of it, see if it's exactly the same. And so far, it does look to be the same. So that's why these things are so cheap, because they really have mass produced the same standard design and I've not even ever figured out what the red LEDs for even. Now it's really bizarre you'll notice that it has a sort of boot um, mode here if you've if you ever see people hacking them like myself there's a mode where it put into a boot and that's because it's using an ST arm chip and let's see which one it is it's actually the STM 32F105 so it's it's actually a pretty standard chip and if you look at a booby cortex board for example it's similar to, to that family and it actually has an onboard uh, bootloader so when you put the boot pin on here you're actually just setting this to bootloader mode so it just allows it to upload its software via serial because this doesn't have obviously USB fitted to it and uh, this has basically been hacked. So someone's hacked their own firmware for this to get them to run into 720 mode. Um, it's not open source firmware, unfortunately, but you know what, it bloody ought to be by now because this is such a standard design. If you look at this, anybody could just clone this and make one. It's about time someone did an open source design for it because it's, it's a bit tedious, to be honest with you, to sort of have to get specific hardware in a specific um, firmware. Um, but yeah, it's not it's not too bad, but it's just it's just annoying. Like now I've bought this and now I'm going to have to fanny around with it. And it'll be I've probably done a few of these by now and uh, it's just a hassle. But yeah, that's that's it really. Nothing's changed. So if you need something to uh, emulate floppies, um this as standard I believe emulates 1.44 megabyte floppy. So if you're running an old PC anyway, just get it as is. You don't really need to do anything. You've just got a piece of software here. And what it'll do, it'll just emulate different um, disks. So let me just close this up and I'll show you. So what you do is you put your USB in and you just select the disk number, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, up to whatever it can do, 2, 5, 6, 5, 12, however many floppies. Um, and then you, well, that's it. Your PC will just see it as if you just dropped the disk. Now here there are some jumpers. So there's S0, S1, and I think it's M0. I think that might be master, slave 0, slave 1. So if you try it and it doesn't work, you can just move your jumpers between these because it's either it's going to be an A colon floppy or a B colon floppy, etc. But let's say I've run it in really old um, retro hardware in that old Amstrad and it did work. So great. There you go. So hopefully that's been an interesting four minutes and a bit for you. If you want one, go on eBay. Please uh, go on eBay and have a look. Don't ask me for specific links. I had a, a thing the other day which was someone going, great video, but I had to go and look for that thing. Dot, dot, dot. Inconvenient. So <laughs> inconvenient. You inconvenience me by not giving me a Google link. Yeah. You know, guys, you've got to do a little bit of the work. As ever. Thanks for watching. <laughs>